All right, so I just thought of a way that we could incorporate a for loop in this and actually make it a little bit more useful than it currently is. So instead of just selecting cities in the United States, why don't we give it a list of countries that we are interested in? So our final output is going to be maybe six or seven different shape files of different countries, so cities in different countries. So to do that, we're going to need to make a list. Now in Python, to make a list, it's the same as making a variable. We're going to make a list. Um, let's just call it countries of interest equals the same way as you do regular variables but to make a list you just do these square brackets now a list is just like it sounds it's just a list of data so separated by commas so if you did it with numbers it would be one two five eight six I mean six and strings you would just put it in strings which is what we're gonna do right now so what um, alright so let's just put the United States Separated by comma. Uh, Italy is a cool country. Comma. Kenya. Just fill these in with whatever countries you can think of. Jordan. Hmm. Oh, Got to put it in quotes. Lebanon. Just get two more. Scot Scotland. And let's go with France. Alright, so now we have a list of the countries that we're interested in. So basically, we're going to create a for loop, and the reason for doing that is because we want this name value here to change every time it goes through. We want it to, first time we want it to be the US, second time Italy, then Kenya, then Jordan. And every time it goes through, we want it to do all of these things. So I'm just going to explain the basic idea of a for loop real fast. If you already know how to do this or know what it is, just skip ahead a little bit. Um, so a for loop's a way to do processes over and over again. Uh, let me just write it out. So keyword for, um, there's different things you can do. So we're just, I'll just print out my name or uh, I'll print out a string uh, a thousand times. So for x in range, you can say, and you can provide it with a number, so thousand. And then you put a colon and it's going to automatically indent. And in other scripting languages or other languages, you, you sometimes might see curly braces. Um, Python uses the indentation, it just helps it look cleaner. And now, so what this is saying is for x, x is what's going to iterate through. So it's, imagine just this little thing going through and it's going to do things as it goes through. So print hello. Okay, so x is something that's going through. So the first time x goes through, it's going to print hello and then there's nothing else to do. So that's one loop. It went through, it complete, it did all the code. So x went through, its value is currently zero, printed hello, went through, now x equals one, goes through again, then x is two, x is three, x is four, all the way to when it gets to 999, then it stops. So that's the basic idea of a script, or a, a for loop. There's this thing that's going to go through all of the code, and when it gets done, it increments its value by one or whatever you want. It doesn't have to be one, but you can select, you can uh, uh, alter that. So if we run this, it will print hello. Now the same thing, instead of doing a range, we can provide it with a list and just loop through that list. So let's actually copy this over real fast. Have a list here, and instead of that range we just say for x in this list so at this is now it has a specified number before we specified a thousand but now we're providing it with a list which also has a, a finite number so it's going to go through this many times and the value of it as it goes through is going to be that I need a colon there so the first time x goes through we can have it print hello, we can still leave that there, and we're also now going to print x. So the first time it goes through, it's going to say print hello, 
print X. X at that time is the United States. Then it's going to go through again, print hello, print X, which now it's Italy. Oops, let me, uh, so yeah, see what it did there? United States, uh, where is it? Hello, United States. Hello, Italy. Hello. So that's the purpose of a for loop. Um, so we want to put all of our code in this for, or not all of it, but portions of it into this for loop. Um, all right, so back to here. ArcPy make feature. We still want this points and points layer. That doesn't need to be in the for loop because that's always going to be all of the points. We need this stuff to be in a for loop. So we're going to say for x in countries of interest. Why don't we just print x? That's going to print the country. And now all of this needs to be indented to line up with this for loop. Because right now it's outside the for loop. We need it to be inside. So tab. All right, now this isn't going to work yet because we're specifying here we want it to equal the United States every single time. So that's not going to work. It's just, it would just print out the United States. It wouldn't make the selections on these other countries. To fix this, we need to do something called string formatting, I think it's called. It's it's a way of placing a variable in a string. So instead of saying United States in here, we can put these little braces like that. And then at the end of the string, you put dot format. And now what do you want that dot format to be? We want it to be X. Now this is conf this confused me at first. This is a string and this basically says you can put a variable in here. It's like substitute a variable in here. Now what variable do you want to substitute in this string? We want x to be in there. So it's going to pop in whatever value x is in this string. So the first time it goes through it will be United States, second time Italy, then Kenya. So that way it's making a feature layer based on these country values. And then it's just going to do the same thing that it did that we did in the last tutorial. It's just going to select the points that are within that current country and it's going to create the output um, one thing okay so we have it creating cities in the US so every time actually right now it would error out because it would say it would create cities in the US and then the second time it tried to do that it would say cities already exists so to fix that we need to over be able to overwrite stuff and to do that you just arcpy env dot overwrite output equals true oh, it doesn't need to be in quotes true so now this lets us overwrite it but that's also not going to help because after it runs through it's the first time it'll be United States then when it gets to Italy it's just going to overwrite the, the US one so what we would want to do ideally is uh, rename this something else so we can use that string format thing again so cities in US let's put a underscore and put that string thing in there um, it goes outside the string and hit dot format and what do we want to pop in there let's just put an X so the file names would be cities in the US underscore or oh, actually let's get it rid of the US cities in whatever the current country is. So the first time it'll be cities in the US, cities in Italy, cities in Kenya, etc. Um, so I think this is ready to run. Inter I think I spelled that wrong. Now see this this is why PyCharm School Idle wouldn't recognize this. It would you wouldn't it'd be harder to find. But this just makes it very clear. Cities of interest. Alright, so let's give this a run. Let's go back to this folder. We should see it populate with multiple shape files. United, all right, so the first time it went through, printed United States, and then you saw it create that. All right, so let's go look at it in ARC. I'm sorry if these tutorials are a little bit long. Uh, it's hard to explain some of this stuff. I'm still learning some of this stuff myself, so it's just, Hard to explain it 
Okay. Um, all right. There we go. Let's bring in countries. All right. So cities in France. Let's see. Boom. It looks good. Not, oh, yeah. France must. That must be part of France, France somehow. Italy. Jordan. Kenya. Lebanon. Scotland. United States. Did Scotland get in there? All right, as you can see, it looks like it worked. I don't know why Scotland did. I don't. Maybe I don't know. But um, so it, it appeared to work. So that's an example of how scripting can make this a lot faster. I mean, you can automate that by using that for loop instead of having to manually do that process over and over and over again. You can just supply it with a list of countries that you're interested in. Um, we, let's just recap this one more time because this was a little bit confusing with this list that we made. So again, we kept everything the same, but we incorporated a list, and in that list were countries we were interested in. Now these countries they had to be spelled exactly as they are as they appear in in this name field. But after we did that, we put it in a for loop and use this string formatting thing, which is very handy. It allows you to put a variable inside of a string. So as this goes through, x is changing every time, and you can just pop that in there to make that um, where clause change every time. Um, and then it just did the same process as we did earlier, but it just did it in a for loop. Um, so hopefully this wasn't too confusing, and hopefully now you're starting to see a little bit of the power that scripting can provide, why it's why it's better than uh, using ArcMap in some instances. But uh, all right, see you guys later.